This week in the field, a little infrared adventure in Julian, California. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. If this is your first time checking out my channel, thanks for giving me a shot. I hope you like what you see and you'll come back for another video. Uh, so today's a little different. Uh, I'm not out at the ocean. I went inland and uh, my daughter and I were looking for something to do mid-afternoon on the weekend and we decided to drive up into Julian and I thought that would be a great opportunity for me to break out the infrared camera shooting in you know, mid-afternoon type of light where maybe it's not the best for our landscapes, but for IR photography, it seemed like it'd be pretty good. And, uh, and I convinced her to come along. She had a camera as well and acted as my assistant during this shoot for some filming. So let's uh, show you a little bit of the footage from this outing and then talk about you know, what we learned. All right, so I'm out in Julian today doing a little uh, infrared adventure. So I got the IR camera. It's a nice overcast day, but there's some good clouds in the sky. It's making for uh, from some nice infrared. Uh, change of pace away from the coast, came inland. I got my assistant behind the camera. Say hello, assistant. Hello. All right, and so yes, we are good to go here. So we're gonna go out and make some photos. Oh, yes. I'll probably cut that part out. <laughs> so one of the nice things about using the IR mirrorless converted cameras, I can just see the world in IR and it makes it so easy to decide what's interesting and what is not. So I'm shooting with just a 50 millimeter today and that's meaning I gotta move around with my feet. I can't zoom, all I can do is frame up and focus. And so to get like this whole scene out there, I've been having to walk up and down this, uh, this pathway. Right, so we just finished photographing around Julian. And uh, I use the infrared camera. You took a bunch of different photos too. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being the assistant, helping out with the filming. Oh yeah. And uh, is there a photo you think you might want to share with people from today? Uh, I did this one and it was a sign and it had like, the houses here are like more of an olden style and you can see that it's wood. And so I had one of the buildings in the background mm -hmm. I was really close to it. And it was off center and I really liked that one. Oh, well, and then we're going to put that up here while you were talking over it. And then I had a close-up of this one flower, and the rest of it was blurry, but the flower and the branch was uh, ah, in detail. We call that bokeh. It's called like the it's a Japanese word for the beauty and things that are out of focus. And I always like to exaggerate how you say it. Bokeh. Anyway, uh, that's oh, it. Okay, okay let, let, we got to get <laughs> on the road. We got to get home before it gets dark. Let's go. Let's do this. We saw at the end, right after the shoot, we had a quick chat about what did we do and you know, what photos did we take. I always do this with myself after an outing to think about, you know, what did I learn? You know, did I relearn something that I'd already known and reinforced it? And uh, my daughter said it was all right for me to share a couple of the photos that she talked about. And I like the one of the signs. That one, you know, it's, to me, it's a very a classic type of photo and she framed it up really nicely. And it also let us find the cemetery, which I'll come back to in a minute. Uh, but the other one you know, that she talked about were these leaves where she'd done a, a very shallow focus on. And that's interesting to me because those are the types of photos I miss. I don't see those things, or at least I'm not predisposed to seeing those types of photos. I'm more looking for the wider landscape or a foreground element I can exaggerate, you know, throw a wide angle lens on. So it's a nice reminder when you, know, you go out with another photographer that has a different way of, of looking at things and you'll learn. Uh, now back to the cemetery. So that was, uh, that was a nice find. Uh, certainly a, uh, a good subject for infrared. But my favorite photos from that area were not of the, the grave markers and so forth, but just because of where this is positioned in the land. It's up on a hill, so you had these views overlooking it. And my favorite shot is just, you know, looking at, a, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's the back end of a farmland, or it's just, you know, it's a garage, and it's just surrounded by a bunch of trees, and it looked really, really cool in infrared. And so uh, I'm going to share the processing of that photo in a couple of days on InPost. So you know, come on back for that to see the the, the teardown of that particular shot. But I think the tip of the week is to go out with other photographers as well as um, to go out at a time of day you might not normally shoot and see about finding a way to make the best of that. I would not normally be out between three and five in the afternoon. Sun's still high in the sky, colors are kind of washed out. But infrared made it look very different, so it was it was nice. It was you know it was you know kind of um, the realization of one of the reasons I got the IR conversion is so I could extend my shooting day and have other times of day that I could go out and make photographs. So this worked out really well. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's In the Field. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know somehow. Comments on the video below. You can send me questions either through the comments or through my website if you want to keep it private. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting. <laughs>